Today I have the great pleasure of, of hosting a, a panel of some very distinguished leaders in the forestry reform sector uh, in Indonesia. And uh, we'll be talking about uh, factors affecting uh, the devolution of forest rights to, uh, to communities in Indonesia. I believe you have a goal of devolving 12.7 million hectares of rights by 2019. Uh, so that's just three, no, four years from now. How's it going? What kinds of problems are you facing? What kinds of successes are you having? Uh, thank you. Uh, 12.7 million hectares is a huge uh, allocation. And we are preparing the proposed map for 12.7 million hectares, uh, working with uh, CSOs and uh, partners. Uh, this map is including uh, the area of uh, production forest, which is uh, free from a permit, also in uh, protection forest. And uh, that area, it is already included in that map. Uh, what's your sort of observation on, on how the implementation of the program is going? Um, yeah. um, first of all, I'd like to um, give my, uh, my respect to uh, the Ministry of Environment and Forestry for letting uh, the policy of uh, giving around 10% of forest areas for the people. Even though as Indonesian, as part of Indonesian civil society for us, it's uh, basically below our expectation because uh, in the process of influencing the midterm development uh, national plan uh, for uh, Jokowi a presidency, we actually proposed uh, for around uh, 40 million uh, hectares. Uh, why? Because we know that the imbalance of land control uh, in and outside forest areas in Indonesia is very, very, um, you know, it's very, very sharp. So we can see that, uh, for example, in the production forest, um, it's a little less than uh, three percent of the forest allocated for the people. It means that more than ninety percent uh, allocated for the uh, companies. So the issue of poverty, the issue of human rights violation, and many other issues happens in this area. So um, we need to we need to stop this problem. The existence of the map is very, very important. And to produce the map, it means that we need to negotiate between uh, the government and the, and the people and also among the people themselves. What's the perspective from the indigenous communities that you're working with with uh, respect to how the process is going? OK, uh, for, first we understand uh, uh, that, that indigenous right is constitutional right in Indonesia. And our constitutions also say that indigenous right is human right. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the, the challenge for us right now, because we, we don't have the, the administrations for that kind of rights for 50 years already. And we don't have the operational uh, procedure to for example, to register that right. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So <clears throat> we have to start from zero in terms of the administration systems and also institutional arrangement. So what we need right now, not only political will from the presidents, but it's also how the president's leadership to, uh, to reform the, the bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. For me, for, 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 for us in Aman, uh, to produce map clearly, yeah, from from the field, mm -hmm. it's not the it's not difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now we already mapped almost ten million. Mm -hmm. A map. Like, this is a map of yeah. of, of rights. Yeah, of the indigenous, the indigenous uh, territory. And yeah, indigenous like communities and so on. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, we we also believe that it with this government, uh, what do you call it? Ask help from peoples like us, indigenous peoples. I think 12.7 million is not is not <coughs> is not too too heavy to, mm -hmm. if we put mm -hmm. if, if we put it in our shoulder mm -hmm. together. Not so, only government, yeah, but also right. civil society, mm -hmm. indigenous peoples. From our uh, optimistic view, mm -hmm. even we can get there in 2000s, uh, 
19 with 40 million hectares. Mm -hmm. yeah. For indigenous peoples itself, because we already start since 15 years ago mm -hmm. with mapping. Mm -hmm. We just need a place yeah. where to put this oh. map mm -hmm. and who will verify the data, you know. Yeah. And, and that's all. And then if there is a conflict, yeah, claim there, let's work together to find out the way, yeah. you know. Yeah. So you're, kind of, you're building a new architecture of forest governance, you know, that it involves community rights, it also involves local government, and, you know, it's, regulations are clearly part of that, but it's a whole new structure. structure right? yeah. It seems a very, it seems like it's needed, but is it being conceived as in that way? What is the interesting is when we, especially in the social forestry context, we we work, we revise the regulation uh, by involving many series of dialogue with the civil society, with CSOs and other partners, also across Echelon One in the Ministry of Environment and Forestry. So this is the new culture and that is very important. Mm -hmm. Start from the beginning that we already open. My observation is uh, that so this is a giant project actually. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, if we talk about the change of the uh, uh, bureaucratic culture, so what I understand in the Ministry of Environment and Forestry is that it has not been a system yet. Mm. Means that we have good person, we have champions such as uh, uh, Viratno and, uh, and others, but in terms of number, actually, they are very small because they are Minority others. Group. They are they <laughs> a minority, actually, yes. To, to, uh, to be honest, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> And there are many uh, uh, officials that still have different views, uh, actually. Yeah. So the yeah. first challenge is how to make, how, how, to, how to protect even yeah. these minority groups, yeah. how to help them uh, to, 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 you know, to, to articulate uh, yeah. this change uh, adequately. Yeah. Uh, so we have to win over their colleagues. Yes, so. they have to be yeah. the winner in this, in this, in this uh, game, uh, actually. But uh, the other issue is that we do not only deal with the Ministry of Environment and Forestry yeah. for, for achieving uh, the 12.7 million. There are other ministries, mm -hmm. for example, Ministry of uh, what's that? Agrarian mm -hmm. and Spatial mm -hmm. Planning, mm -hmm. Ministry of uh, uh, Social Affairs, for example, Ministry of Home Affairs. As Abdon said, we cannot, we cannot wait and we cannot, uh, we cannot work one by one with them to change. So what we, we need now is the leadership of the president because he is the one who set up the target. He is actually, uh, I mean the 12.7 million is his target. So he needs to be responsible for the target by leading uh, this process, by asking other ministries to do that uh, work properly and also to ask local governments to be you know, in conformity uh, with uh, this uh, policy uh, will. Uh, it takes time to uh, bureaucratic reform, but it is not impossible. We will put a presidential, presidential degree for a uh, proposed area for social forestry. Mm -hmm. And in the presidential degree, there, will, there is uh, several ministers mm -hmm. included in there, mm -hmm. as their mandate also, mm -hmm. but also governor and the, the head of district. Mm -hmm. Uh, to to support the national agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, it is important to make sure that it is not a political number. 12.7 mm -hmm. is really a big number, of course, but it is not a political number. Mm -hmm. Another challenge is, is the challenge is also how to work with the local government mm -hmm. where the social forest 12.7 mm -hmm. will be implemented. Mm -hmm. So there is also a, a challenge to work with them, but there is a hope that there are many provinces that already show their interest, like mm -hmm. West Sumatra and South Sulawesi mm -hmm. and uh, Nusa Tenggara. Mm -hmm. They are eager to to work with this new policy. This is the policy for their own people. So this is also very uh, very interesting uh, progress yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah.
Paul Abdon, what, what would you add to that? Actually, we are now discussing in Amman a new strategy from conf confrontations uh, to engagement. engagement. Yeah, but now this, this discussion in Amman to, we call it the share, share power. Share power, power yeah. share. Yeah, power share. share. So, okay. or share visions. Mm -hmm. Now we have it with Nawachita. But how to make it work, we need power. We start that with self vision that Nawachita. Mm -hmm. Six point, mm -hmm. six commit, uh, commitment from the president. Mm -hmm. But we have to become together yeah. from the enemy to be dialogue and then <laughs> work together. <laughs> so really working. Share power. Share power. Yeah, share power. That, uh, in, in that uh, strategy, that's why we propose to have the presidential task force. Mm -hmm. As the, because, because presidential task force uh, is the instrument for the president to lead the process. Actually, because we want him to do that, because he, he has the commitment. So we work with the presidential uh, office uh, to, to, to put this in right issue into, yes. the, into the, the, the core of the, uh, of, of the political process. What we, we are doing with uh, Viratno and also with Abdon is to, you know, to continuously talk each other. We know that sometimes we are different, but that doesn't matter because we, we can learn each other. We, we, as, a, as a civil society, we also need to understand about the way of the bureaucracy work because we cannot propose, you know, it's like uh, ideas from, uh, from the sky and then ask, ask them yeah. to implement. Yeah. Like if, it, if this does not happen with their organizational structure, with their authority and also uh, task. And for the civil society, the challenge is how to transform the ideology into practical um, steps that can be adopted easily uh, by the government.